This is the introductory unit to kinematics, which is the study of motion, which is a physics unit. So when we're talking about motion, we are often hear the terms speed and velocity. Now, oftentimes people think that speed and velocity are actually the same thing. They are not. They can have the same number, but they actually are not the same thing. They both deal with motion. So speed, for example, is equal to distance divided by time. The symbols that we use for that is speed is V, distance is D, and time is T. If we're looking at velocity, velocity is equal to displacement divided by time, and it actually does use the same symbols in the formula. But here is where it differs. And this is a new term. Speed is what we call a scalar quantity. Now what scalar means is that it has magnitude, but no direction. For example, if we were looking at the speed um, of a car, for example, uh, let's say a car goes 100 meters in five seconds. What would be the speed? 20 meters per second. Now, velocity is what we call a vector quantity. Now vector quantity means there is a magnitude, that there is a number, but there must be direction. So for example, if we did the same thing again, let's say a car was traveling 100 meters north, See, there's my N in brackets in five seconds, then the velocity would be 20 meters per second direction. Now, how do you differentiate between these two symbols? Well, if something is considered a vector quantity, you put these little arrows above the things that are vectors. So, this is our velocity, this is our displacement. Both of those are vector quantities. Okay, so that's the first part of our discussion that we had. Now, what if I wanted to now graph motion? Okay, so let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So let's just say I walked, here's my starting point, to point B, and point B was 100 meters away. Now, if I walked from point A to point B, what would be my total distance? That would be 100 meters. Now, if I can also look at displacement here. Now, remember that displacement is a vector quantity, which means that you have to have a direction. So let's just say when I walked 100 meters, we'll say that this is north, so that means this would be east. So what would be my total displacement? 
my total displacement would be 100 meters east. Now, what if I traveled second time from point A to point B, then halfway in between, and I ended at point C? So, what would be my total distance this time? Well, I went A to B, which is 100 meters, and then I went from B to C, which is halfway, which would be another 50 meters, which means my total distance travel would be 150 meters. Now, here is where your displacement is going to differ. Because what the definition of displacement is, it's not how far you've traveled, but it's where are you in relation to the original position. So for example, if I end up at, at C and I started at A, how far am I initially away from point A? Well, I'm halfway in between, so my answer would be 50 meters. Now, I have to have direction though. So where am I direction-wise in relation to point A? I am 50 meters east of point A. Okay, now, what if I wanted to graph this motion, which you can actually do? So let's first of all do a distance time graph. So whenever I'm doing distance time graphs again, time always goes on the bottom and distance goes on the y-axis. Now, I have to add some time here, all right? So let's just say we're gonna graph this motion. We're gonna add some times here, okay? So let's just say here's zero, zero. And I walked from point A to point B in 20 seconds. Okay, so there is where I would be. And let's say this is 100 meters here, right? Now, let's just say when I got to point B, I stopped for five seconds. So how would I show that on my graph? Well, I'm not moving anymore, but time is, continue to, is continuing, so it would actually be a flat line. So let's just say I stayed there for, 20, for five seconds. So now I'm at time 25. And then I turned around and walked back, but let's just say this time, I walked all the way back to the original position. How far would that be? Well, that would be another 100 meters. So when I'm doing my graph, I would actually have it go up. I'm sorry, I have to extend this a little bit. And that means that I would have traveled a total distance of 200 meters. So here's from point A to point B. I stopped. I stopped there for five seconds. And then I went back. And it took me, let's say, another 20 seconds. So now we're roughly at about 45 seconds. Okay, so that's how I would do a distance time graph. What if I wanted to do a displacement time graph for the same motion? All right, so. Time is gonna go on the bottom. Displacement goes on the side. We also have to make sure we have a direction, so we'll say it's east. Now, let's use green this time. Let's do the same thing again. So I'm starting at time zero, and I walked 100 meters in 20 seconds. So at this point, it looks the same. I then stopped for five seconds. It also looks the same. 
But now this is where it differs. If I wanted to now graph going from A to B, then going back to A, what you're going to do is instead of continuing the line up, because that would be distance, you actually bring the line back down. So the X axis is actually the original position. And let's say that took us again, 20 seconds to do. So if you look at this now, you can see the difference between the, the distance time graph and the displacement time graph. Now, one other thing I just wanna show you, and this will help you with the assignment. Let's say I wanted to find the slope of this line. Now, if you recall, and you hopefully have learned this in math, I'm not sure if you learned this or not, um, that slope is equal to the change in y over the change in x. Now, easiest thing to probably do for this line is you pick two points. So I'm gonna pick 100 and zero, and I'm gonna subtract them, because it's change y2 minus y1, and then that would be 20 and zero. So 100 divided by 20 would be five meters per second because this is in meters and this is in seconds, which means when you actually find the slope of a distance time graph, you just found the speed. Now, if we did the same thing here on this graph, you're actually gonna get the same answer, right? Because you're using the same values. It would be, the slope would be equal to 100 minus zero over 20 minus zero, which would give you five meters per second. But now, since this is a vector, you would have to say east, five meters per second east. And that means that when you find the slope of a displacement time graph, you're actually finding the velocity. Now, if we take a look here, both of these values, if it's a flat line on a graph, is there actually a slope? No. So your slope or your distance time or your speed here would be zero, which makes sense because you're not moving and your velocity would also be zero. All right, now, this is where it gets a little bit weird and kind of cool all at once, I think. I'm gonna go over to here because you know how to do the slope for this, I'm sure. Let's do the slope for this line. Now, I'm sure you have learned this before, that if you have a line going down like this, this means that it's going to be a negative slope, right? So, let's do our, let's calculate the slope here again. So our, y would be 0 minus 100 this time because y2 would be 0, y1 would be 100, and it's going to be, again, 20 seconds. So when you calculate this out, it's going to be a negative number, negative 5 meters per second east. Now that seems kind of strange because how can you have a negative value when you're calculating velocity. So in reality, negative numbers in physics don't actually mean that they are negative. In this case here, it would mean a change in the direction, which makes sense. So they're either going negative five meters per second east, or if you look up here, from A to B, I'm going to east, B to C, which direction am I going in? I'm going west. So you could also express this answer as five meters per second west. All right, so that is what I have taught. If you have any questions, just send me an email. Next week, we'll, we will be starting to do the Zoom video conferencing, so if you have any questions about anything then, you can also ask me as well. All right, take care, have a good day.